Adelaide is a bench scientist, like most of Aubrey's detractors, and I wondered what she thinks about their attacks on her husband. One of the things that makes Aubrey's whole game plan difficult to assess is that the different ideas come from different fields and no bench scientist can has the time to read the literature widely outside of his or her own field. His detractors do not have that broad a, ba a base of knowledge. And they certainly give the impression of not being willing to read his papers. But it is certainly not the case that the entire scientific community thinks, he, thinks he's a crackpot. So is he, or isn't he? Is Aubrey de Grey the new Darwin, or just another crank? In an effort to find out, back in Boston, Technology Review and Jason Pontin had offered a $10,000 reward to anyone who could produce a detailed and convincing evaluation of Aubrey's Sense project. And get this, Aubrey promptly made it $20,000. So Aubrey's doubled your prize money. He's a confident man. I'm confident that I'm right because I have worked hard to get people who ought to know to explain to me why I'm wrong, and they haven't been able to. With his scientific reputation at stake, how was Aubrey feeling? I'm deliriously happy. I mean, how could anyone have a, a more fulfilling life than a crusader who's succeeding? And who had a loving wife who you know, had a great, you know, great, great time in their private life as well, you know. It's very hard to imagine how, how, how my life could be better than it is. But the Sense Challenge had attracted a submission from a team of nine scientists headed by Harvard biologist Preston W. S. Stepp III. Their paper was highly critical. I asked Aubrey what he thought of S. Stepp. As I understand it, S. Stepp feels very uh, yeah. strongly about what you're doing. Oh, yes, yes, he's completely demented. Well, I haven't met him, you understand, but that's my impression from the way he writes. Demented? Obviously, it was important to meet this Dr. Estep. Hi. Hi. So you've put in the, uh, your submission to the Saints Challenge, $20,000. Yes, we gonna, have. Are you going to win? Uh, we've been told that we've won. Already? Not already, but the results aren't out yet. No. They'll be published in an upcoming uh, issue of Technology Review. But the editor, Jason Ponton, has told us that we've won. I have very little doubt that, that uh, Aubrey Sen's plan is, uh, is a fairy tale. Is? A fairy tale. We've got to get at what's right, not what we want. Old age does kill people. Everybody knows that. We're all aware of that. Something should be done about it. We're all working for that. He just likes to talk about it all the time to get people whipped into a frenzy, primarily so that they don't pay attention to the details of sense. Why is he doing this? Because it's easier that way. You have to shelve the passion. You have to say, I can't let my passions overwhelm my best judgment, my best trained judgment on how to solve this problem. One of the classic signs of pseudoscience is that there's a lone figure out there saying that everybody else is wrong, that he's, a, he's the lone genius and there's some grand conspiracy against him. And this is no different. This is the exact same thing. And the reason it usually turns out that way is because that person has an emotional agenda. That evening, in the hotel lobby, I noticed Aubrey. My phone has a camera, and I told Aubrey the news, that he'd lost the challenge. So, Aubrey, I've talked to Peter Stapp, and he tells me that he thinks he's won the sense challenge. What do you say to that? I say, let's see. And guess what? Nobody had won. 
The judges weren't convinced that Aubrey's right, but neither did they think the best step and his colleagues had shown Aubrey to be wrong or proved that sense is nonsense. And it occurred to me that this went to the heart of what science is all about. Bench scientists make a point of showing how their ideas can be judged on the evidence, but visions of the future like Aubrey's can't be proved or disproved in this way. I phoned editor Jason Pontin. What they're saying is SENS exists in a kind of antechamber of science, that if you wish to think well of it, you are free to find its propositions intriguing, but you're equally free to doubt it altogether, because SENS doesn't rise to the level of being testable. SENS isn't yet true science as our judges understand it. Right. Now, what does Aubrey de Grey think about all this, as far as you know? Aubrey thinks he's been entirely kind of um, justified. Aubrey de Grey is in a kind of a triumphalist mood. As things stand, the sense challenge has been an enormous advance, an enormous progress. I definitely consider it a, a, a consolidation of my advance to Gandhi stage three, uh, and possibly even the first step of my advance to Gandhi stage four. Explain that briefly and clearly, what you mean. I think it was in 1941 that Gandhi made this famous quote um, about the progress of radical ideas in society, um, and which are opposed by the mainstream. And he didn't talk about science specifically, but it certainly worked in this context. He said, first they um, ignore you, and then they laugh at you, that's stage two, and then they oppose you explicitly, and then they say they were with you all along. Um, I think it's fairly clear that I have plenty of explicit overt opposition now rather than simply off the record ridicule which is stage two um, so that's very much stage three and the quality of that opposition has been so poor so far that I think it's fair to say that the, the smart money is on stage four um, arriving rather soon. But then a strange twist in Aubrey's story when I called the Cambridge Department of Genetics. Department of Genetics, speaking. Oh yes, hello. Could I speak to Dr. Aubrey de Grey please? He's actually left uh, the university now. He no longer works there? That's right. I asked to speak to Aubrey's boss, Professor Michael Ashburner, to find out why Aubrey had left. He has used departmental facilities, for example, the departmental web server. He has used the departmental address for his hobby. And I regarded that as being unsatisfactory because it did indeed give the impression that he was a scientist employed by the University of Cambridge. And I have gotten now, how many times I have seen him referred to as Professor Aubrey de Grey, and the fact is that he was a computer technician. Well, so what? Aubrey's part-time passion for biology turned into a full-time crusade, and now he's so famous he doesn't need Cambridge anymore. He's outgrown it. Especially now PayPal entrepreneur Peter Thiel has just promised him three and a half million dollars of research funding. I want to know why you seem to have the answer to absolutely everything. Because that's what I've tried to find. You know, I've worked on it. Do you really want to live? 